What's happening YouTube? This is Tristan back again with Lawson's Car Reviews and as I promised I have the 2020 Chevrolet Impala V6 Premier so it's got all the good stuff on it and I did a car review before and it was on the LS model and it was terrible but I'm happy to tell you this is a much nicer model you definitely uh, will want to take a look at this one and consider it. Chevrolet is discontinuing the Impala after this year. So this is the last chance for you to get a hold of the uh, 2020. So without further ado, let's take a look. All right, first of all, let's go ahead and look at the styling. So even though it is the same basic styling as the four cylinder LS version, this one is much nicer. Let's just take a quick look around the car. You actually have 19 inch, 245 by 45, 19 inch wheels. Very nice premium wheels. And they're much nicer than the little itty bitty 17s that I had on the other car. And it comes with a lot more chrome than what the uh, standard model comes on it. And it's actually, a good looking car. This is the same color as my car which is a 2010 Impala but it's a LTZ. The only knock that I'm gonna give at the back of this car is that these are not really these should be exhaust tips instead it's kind of like just a decorative feature and the exhaust tips are just these tiny little things that's in there. On the positive side the trunk is huge. It is large enough to store a couple of suitcases and a couple of carry-ons. Um, it's 18.8 .8 cubic feet, so there's plenty of storage space. And just the overall lines of the car are very nice. It's definitely a pretty full-size sedan. You can get them in multiple colors. This color is okay, but I really like the black. That uh, The black ones that come with a spoiler and there's another kind of blue. And the, uh, the running lights and everything down here. I just really like the styling of it. This is just a much more upgraded premium model of this vehicle. It does come with remote start and it does come with the standard Chevrolet 3.6 liter V6 engine. And I believe that's really the same engine that comes in the Chevy Camaro and a few of the other vehicles. Cadillac's vehicles have that engine quite often, which means you do get 305 horsepower, 264 pound feet of torque, which is a good number for this vehicle. Gas mileage is not too bad, I believe it's 18 in the city and 28 on the highway. So not bad for a pretty quick six cylinder. It comes with a six speed automatic transmission. The interior is actually really nice, really upscale. The seats are a great leather material and you kind of have this brown piping that goes down the seats and there's plenty of room in the back. I've sat in the back behind myself and there's more than enough room for me to sit in front and for somebody else to sit behind me who is the same height and I am six foot four. Do have a couple of uh, cup holders in the armrest. Uh, the armrest is very soft so it's very comfortable and the car can seat five people I would say pretty comfortably. They can't all be uh, six foot four like me but they can definitely uh... <clears throat> this is me sitting in the back. Very comfortable vehicle. Awesome car. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the steering wheel, but I mean, it, it's okay. I kind of wish they had a different design on it. But all of the materials in here and the armrest in the front, it, they all feel pretty good. 
the back seats are really comfortable. I will say this, the places where it feels cheap is this stuff here. It's kind of a, it's got like a cool design to it, but you can tell that that's not gonna last the test of time. If you take a look down here, you do have wireless phone charging, which is a good feature. And this portion closes up too. And you have dual climate control, heated seats. I'm not sure if they're cooled, I'll have to check that. And you do get quite a bit of storage in here. So probably about the same amount of storage that I have in my 2010 Impala, but um, in the glove compartment, is it's an okay size it's not the the biggest glove compartment i've ever seen this particular model does come with the bose speakers um and you know what i've not really tried it out yet let's turn this vehicle on see how it sounds okay so you've got analog speedo analog tachometer but you also have the digital gauge in the middle. You can go through some different options. Uh, miles per gallon. Fuel remaining. Dismiss. As you can see, different options. Oil, tire pressure. Standard. The car's um, audio system is actually pretty good. Um, does come with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which is a good feature on this vehicle. And then, as I said, you do have the dual climate control, which is not bad. And then you've got heated seats. Stability control and all the other goodies that you uh, that you get in most of the premium Chevys. And you do have remote start feature. So in order to remote start this vehicle, you just have to press the lock button once and then press and hold the button in the bottom right. It starts right up. Very simple, very easy remote start feature. The exhaust and the engine are actually very, very quiet. Listen to, uh, listen to me rev it just a couple of times. It is not a very loud car whatsoever, which is okay. Everybody is not looking for a loud vehicle. As I said, standard Chevy key fob. It's kind of cheapy looking, to be fair, and it feels cheap. Even when you flick the key out, it's not a very good strong spring. So I feel like this is gonna break on the regular. But, without further ado, let's take this thing for a spin. Let's take it on some uh, city streets and on the highway a little bit, and I'll give you my driving impressions. Okay, guys. We're going to see how quick I can get to 60 from a dead stop. You ready? Let me do the window up. Zero to 60. One, two, three, go. That actually wasn't bad. That actually wasn't bad at all. That was a... Uh, there was a little bit of wheel spin, it is front wheel drive, but that was way quicker than what I thought. Okay, let's do another, another pull. Let me slow down. Let's go from 30 miles an hour. You ready? Let's get to 30. Okay, go. not bad not bad this is a I'm not gonna say it's not the quickest thing 
it does lack some torque and it does weigh between 3,600 and 3,800 pounds um, but once you get going it definitely has some some great pickup um, I'm pleasantly surprised with that guys I really have to say that this car is actually quite a pleasure to drive it's just very comfortable and very smooth and if you're just looking for a nice family sedan that drives smooth and gets fairly good gas mileage as you can see it's been averaging 25.3 gas miles that was before I've had it but it's been averaging good gas mileage for me too um, and the four cylinder that I drove last year that averaged only one mile per gallon more than what this has been while I was driving it so for the added power that you get and the added comfort it's definitely worth going the next model up but this is definitely a car that I believe you should consider buying and it's definitely going to depreciate so that it's more affordable because it's a Chevy and they're stopping making them whereas if you try to get a luxury vehicle in any other brand you're gonna definitely pay a lot more for it so keep that in mind when you're shopping for this or when you're shopping for a vehicle like this because uh, unless you have an endless amount of cash it definitely will make a big difference there is one other thing that I do have to knock about this car which is even though it only has 1400 miles on the clock the AC does not work so on the highway I'm having to have the windows up so that you can hear me but I am literally burning up and I'm sweating my pants off so I can do this review for you <laughs> but it is really hot and uh, I did call the rental company and they basically said that they'd give me this car for free since it doesn't have any AC so so I decided I'll keep it and review it even without AC so I'm sure maybe it just needs recharging or you know something silly happened but uh, most cars that only have um, coming up to 50, uh, 1500 miles their AC is going to work so and there's a huge accident over here on the left hand side so it's gonna take me forever to get home so that is interesting okay here we go 80 miles an hour pull let's see how fast it takes to get to 100 it is not bad at all now what was that 108 or 110 I didn't want to look down to, to see but I will say this that was incredibly smooth to get to that speed incredibly composed and I felt like the car wasn't wobbling it wasn't shaking it was staying very planted and it was still pulling very hard even though we was already at almost 110 so um, it's definitely uh, got good pickup So guys, in conclusion, and I'm sorry that I'm sweating so much, but like I said, the AC does not work in this car, and it is 90 degrees, just about, so, and humid, humid here in Missouri, so I'm sweating my pants off. Um, but in conclusion, I actually think that this, as long as it's reliable, I can't tell you about the reliability, since it's a brand new car but if this car is reliable it is a good driving vehicle it's very smooth the seats are comfortable the styling on the seats I feel like is awesome and it's just overall a good driving vehicle um, it's better than a lot of other sedans that I've driven it's very smooth and I definitely think since I gave such a harsh review of the four-cylinder 
um, Impala, this one has definitely redeemed itself. So my advice is, if you are going to buy a Chevy Impala, number one, spend the extra money and get the 2020. Don't get the 2019, don't get the four cylinder. Make sure you get the V6 and get the extra power and do yourself a favor, at least, even if it doesn't have a sunroof like this one, at least get the leather seats because the leather is extremely comfortable and I feel like the styling is very nice the bolstering on the seats it's not a race car but you get nice bolstering and they feel like they're going to wear well over time which is important if you're planning on keeping this car for a extended period anyway that's the end of the review comment like subscribe and when you are looking at the description if you click more to drill down and see more information I will leave the overall score that I am giving this car and the reasons why in a bit more detail but Oh, and the next video will be of my Impala, which is a 2010. That way you guys who are not in the market for a new Impala, but are looking to buy an old one, can also have an informed review. And I've had that car for almost four years, so I can give you a pretty good overview of it. And uh, I will be impartial and tell you all of the positives and negatives of that vehicle. Until then, I will see you in the next review. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Help me get to a thousand subscribers. I need them now. I need a thousand subscribers now. 10,000, 100,000. Give me all the subscribers on YouTube and I will be happy. Help me, help me.